and salutations, my dearest friends. My name is Samantha, and today we are doing a Regency-inspired makeup look. I'm going to be doing my makeup inspired by the Bridgerton series. As I do my makeup, I'm going to be talking about what I thought of the series and what I think of the books. So if that interests you, keep on watching. This is the finished look, as you guys can tell. What do you think? What do you think? Do we like? Do we hate? I hope you don't hate. I adored the makeup in the Bridgerton series and I've been wanting to film this video for quite a long time. Obviously not a direct recreation of it because I have different skin tone and skin color and hair texture than the actresses on that show. I don't have bangs so like this was the best I could do. My mom actually did this hairstyle with no heat. No heat tools. Just like my natural working with my natural hair and I, I really really like it. I thought this would be a really fun video when I ask you guys what type of videos you want to see for this series that I'm doing. A few of you have asked for makeup videos so here we go. It's not just makeup videos I am talking about the Bridgerton series as I do my makeup. I'm giving you guys my thoughts, talking about my favorite characters, the whole spiel, the whole spiel. Some of my thoughts are a little controversial I know I am a huge fan of Bridgerton. I loved the series, but there were some things I didn't like and I've been vocal about that before. I'd love for you guys to hang out with me and chat with me. This is the last day of my two weeks of filming and I hope you guys have enjoyed the videos. I filmed a video every single day up until Valentine's Day, which is today. So happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, my friends. I love you. Thank you for watching my videos. You guys know I'm a huge fan of Valentine's Day and it doesn't always have to be romantic love. It can be love for your friends or your family or for yourself. So if you're not someone who celebrates Valentine's Day, I highly encourage you to do so. Always uplift other people to love themselves and to be kind to themselves and like take this day buy something nice for yourself treat yourself go to the store and buy all that yummy valentine's day candy and eat it make yourself a nice dinner watch your favorite movie reread your favorite book like this is such an amazing holiday it's one of my favorite holidays like i like valentine's day more than i like christmas i know i'm crazy I just love love. So yeah, I was so excited to film these two weeks of videos for you guys. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you like this finale. So I chatted a lot in this video. It's going to be very long, probably one of my longest videos. I'm very sorry about that, but here we go. We're doing it. I think we're doing it. Okay. So we are doing a Daphne Bridgerton inspired makeup look. I love her makeup so much in the series. I love all of, gosh, honestly, the entire show, the costumes, the hair, the makeup, the quality, the backgrounds, the location, everything. It is aesthetically and just artistically gorgeous. And that's not even just talking about like the acting and the plot, like aesthetically and artistically, like they had some amazing artists working on this project. So we're gonna do our best. Obviously, this is not a direct recreation of the makeup look. Plenty of YouTube videos with that exact concept on YouTube. So if you guys wanna check it out, I will link some amazing ones down below. Obviously, I don't have the same skin color, hair type, skin type as the actress who plays Daphne. So it's it's all in good fun. I haven't been stalking. Okay, I'm very chatty in this video. So hopefully you guys don't mind. I'm stalking the makeup artist who did Phoebe's makeup or Daphne's makeup in the series. She is such a talented artist. Like I honestly was scrolling through her page for hours because she did so many Instagram posts of like details of exactly what she used. She did tips and tricks and photos and behind the scenes. So if you guys want to follow her, I will leave her Instagram down below as well as I'll put it on the screen because honestly that is a true artist i'm nowhere near that caliber and i'm not going to pretend to be in prep was everything the makeup artist did talk about the skin prep that she did daphne has this very naturally no makeup flawless beautiful look to her with a very subtle glow makeup artist did state she didn't use a ton of highlight on phoebe because she had really good skin and was really good with her skincare so we're gonna fake it till we make it because i don't have clear skin as you can tell so i already prepped my skin with some skincare moisturizer oils all that jazz and then i prepped it with the highlighting moisturizer from tarte this has a iridescence to it so it kind of gives me a little bit of a glow i know that the makeup artist on set used max strobe cream I do really like that product, but it, I have incredibly oily skin and that makes it even more like oily and greasy. So I'm not using that for this video. Daphne had flawless skin, very natural, and I have a lot of breakouts. I'm actually breaking out the most I've broken out in a really long time. So that kind of sucks, but I thought it was interesting to show you guys how I would cover that up. So I'm going to color correct. The makeup artist on set did not do this, but for me, it is a necessary thing. So I just take a peach color corrector and I go over these 
little spots and dots on my face. Some people like to use green to color correct, but I use a peach color for my skin tone. I think it actually looks more natural and works better for hyperpigmentation, so there's that first up let me just quickly talk about the dress that i'm wearing it is a regency inspired dress i got it off amazon i know some people don't like to support amazon which is completely understandable the only reason i purchased it off of amazon was because i was doing this video and i didn't have a lot of time to film it and amazon had next day shipping so i did order a few more dresses from etsy and also shein which is a clothing website Click the exact dress that i'm wearing down below if you guys want to check it out yes i did purchase more regency inspired dresses because you guys have been asking for these types of videos so maybe i will film maybe i'll film a couple more we don't know that the makeup artist used was a chanel foundation i think it was like their aqua foundation i've used that one before and i do have it but it's a little dark for me i haven't seen much sun these days crazy if i try to wear that one and also i don't have as clear skin as daphne so i have to kind of tweak things a bit so i'm going to be using the clinique even better glow foundation mixed with the ColourPop pretty fresh hyaluronic acid tinted moisturizer Her skin in the show is the thing of dreams truly the thing of dreams like all right let's just pop this right on and then we can start talking about bridgerton and my thoughts about it so funny popping on this foundation because i talked about it in my last video but the ingredients oh i got some in my hair the ingredients that they used wow the regency time period was more about the natural skin it wasn't as intense makeup as maybe like the georgian time period the ingredients they had in their foundation was still crazy they would actually put lead in their foundation which was poisonous and caused a whole slew of issues a little bit more coverage I'm gonna build in really small layers. And too many makeup facts in this video because I did that in my last video a lot. Like what type of makeup they use, the ingredients they used, similar products, what their products kind of would work like. So I'll link that video down below. I think what a lot of people like about Bridgerton is Lady Whistledown. Like she is a fan favorite for sure. Just her humor and like the secret of who is Lady Whistledown. Although they announced that in the first season, which I don't, Think that gets announced until like the third or fourth book correct me if i'm wrong um so i was surprised they announced who it was but it was very interesting whistle down they did have scandal sheets and gossip sheets like that so these women didn't most of these women didn't have jobs they would you know stay home and have company and host parties and things like that so a lot of them would wait for these type of newspapers because that was the only way they would get their news of the gossip that was going around town they also have something comparable to like fashion magazines where it would give them like updates on what is the latest fashion the in-trend colors of the season i'm going to use just a small image of concealer to conceal some of my blemishes editing sam here the reason i am working in really small layers is because when a lot of people have blemishes they think that they need to go in with the fullest coverage foundation and the heaviest powder but in reality working in really small layers only targeting the places that you have blemishes makes it look a lot more natural and you still get a flawless full coverage look I do enjoy videos like this it's fun to be a little bit more creative i guess using the makeup revolution concealer by the way all right let's go ahead and talk about my thoughts on bridgerton as i do my makeup okay so let's start off with the books let me start off by saying that i am super thankful for bridgerton for the simple fact that romance is getting the intention that it deserves truthfully uh and not just romance specifically historical romance people are seeing it more as a valid genre it is encouraging people to read more historical romance and so many people saying that they've read bridgerton and they loved it and they want a series very similar to it they want to know what to read next which i mean is honestly so amazing many platforms and youtubers that have created bridgerton related content i think the community the historical romance community has really thrived with the Bridgerton series. There were so many readathons, so many channels that I found, so many friends that I have made. Um, so yeah, the romance community is doing fantastic and a lot of the intention has come from people watching Bridgerton, which is awesome. And it has been number one on Netflix for weeks, months since Christmas. Um, so yeah, that is 
amazing. I will always be a proponent of supporting romance and letting people know that romance is valid and just encouraging people to read romance. Someone who loves love. I love a good love story. I love supporting women and feeling empowered to read something that makes them happy. That's my concealer and my foundation done with no powder. I'm not going to put a lot of powder because her skin is very, very dewy. I'm going to just put a tiny bit of a lighter concealer right here because she does have some bright under eyes. I am going to be completely honest and this might be a little controversial, but it is what it is. I gave the very first book, The Duke and I, two stars. Did not like it. Do you think that book had a lot of redeemable qualities? Julia Quinn is an amazing author. Her storytelling ability is fantastic. My favorite thing about the Bridgerton series is the family dynamic. I love the Bridgertons. I love seeing the brothers and sisters interact. I love the family dynamic. I have a huge family, so I love reading about huge families. And I am definitely someone who thinks that love doesn't only have to be romantic. You can have love for your siblings or your friends. And I love how the Bridgerton series really showcased that. I also just really loved Simon. I loved his backstory. You don't get to see in historical romance a character who stutters or a character who isn't entirely confident. Loved seeing that in historical romance and I think in one of the interviews the actor who plays Anthony had said that the Bridgerton series is a beautiful series that really breaks down toxic masculinity and shows these really powerful women coming into themselves and there's also a beautiful love story and I think that is a perfect description of the series. I think that's a perfect description of romance in general. So those are the, some of the things that I like about the Bridgerton books. The reason I rated the Duke and I so lowly and I've talked about this before I will link a video down below where I talked about some historical romances that I don't like. No I'm not going to spoil anything for people who haven't read the book or who haven't seen the series. Um, I don't think trigger warnings are spoilers so if I mention a trigger warning it is for someone who needs that. I think it's important to remember that that trigger warnings are not meant for you they're meant for the people that need that so it is nice to give people that beforehand so that they can make the decision going into the book if that is something they're willing to look over and also they're not caught off blindsided. So many people when I read the book were like oh there's this one scene that you might not like but it's fine it's totally fine and I was like oh okay nobody told me exactly how it went down or exactly what the trigger warning was and I was a little thrown off. So I think when you know the trigger warnings going in you're more prepared and you might be able to view the book in a better light to be completely honest. Before I set with powder I'm going to do a little bit of cream contour um, Daphne, or just the actress who plays Daphne, Phoebe, has a very high, like these apple perfect cheekbones. So I'm going to use some cream contour to do that. And the makeup artist on the set used the Chanel very popular cream bronzer. Editing Sam here again. I quickly just wanted to mention this because I know some people will comment it before I start talking about the controversial scene. I do know that Julia Quinn has addressed it and explained why she wrote it like that. I do understand and obviously there are a ton of things about Bridgerton I like but that particular scene still rubs me in the wrong way unfortunately. So what I was saying, the scene that I'm referring to is the end scene when Daphne, hmm, how do I word this? When Daphne, mm, I don't want to offend anyone. Daphne basically ensures that Simon comes inside her. Okay, let's not let's not beat around the bush. She learns how children are made, and uh, a lot of people say that Daphne is very innocent in this book. And yes, that is how Regency women were. They did not learn about sex and how to make babies and the marital act until literally their wedding night and then some mothers weren't entirely forthcoming with their daughters so it was kind of just a fend for yourself type of thing. I'm gonna set this with some powder not a ton because uh her skin is very dewy. Simon tells Daphne that he is unable to have children and he has his own reasonings for that that he's not entirely forthcoming with which I know some people didn't like which is honestly fine. I mean, he didn't really know Daphne that well to just like open up all his secrets, but it's fine. So he has his own reasons why he doesn't want children and he kind of does everything to ensure that she does not get pregnant. Well, she finds out how children are made and she is immediately upset. She feels like she has been betrayed or lied to. So she decides that she is going to make sure that he does what he needs to do to get her pregnant. No discussion beforehand, very irrational type of behavior. 
in the book, Simon is very, very drunk. And that rubs me the wrong way. A lot of people say that this wasn't straight up sexual assault because he did want to have sexual in intercourse with her, which I will, I, that makes sense. But she still manipulated him and pressured him into having children, which I just don't think is right. Something that you can't force someone to do in my opinion and in the book it just was in really bad taste a lot of people say that Daphne's intentions weren't malicious and I wholeheartedly disagree with that I think her intentions were extremely malicious and extremely intentional in the book there is a direct quote where she says oh gosh I, I don't have the book in front of me but there is a point where she says that there's a moment that she realizes that she could do anything to him and have anything from him. And that right there just shows the intentional thought process that she knew she was doing something where she was taking advantage of him and she continued to do that. And I feel like if this was a reverse situation and the guy was doing that to the girl and she was drunk and he was taking advantage of the situation, people would lose their minds. They would not agree with it. They would not brush it off so easily. I definitely think because it was a man, people are brushing it off and that infuriates me. Honestly, if that scene wouldn't have happened, I probably would have given the book four stars. Uh, but that scene just ruined everything for me. Now I feel like the show, now here's where I'm not so controversial, I feel like the show was not as bad. Simon wasn't drunk in the scene and there was a little bit more conversation and accountability from both Daphne and Simon, but Daphne still never apologized. And that's my main thing. Simon was always the one who was apologizing. Simon was always the one who made it seem like he was the bad guy. And I really think that Daphne should have apologized. Even if her intentions weren't malicious, like some people say, afterwards when she saw the pain that Simon was going through because of her actions, she should have apologized just for that. And she didn't. There was not a scene where she apologized or reflected or grew nothing. Okay, she just wanted her baby and she was willing to do whatever she needed to do to do that my opinion and i know a lot of people are probably clicking off on this video or giving it a thumbs down but that's my opinion Moving on from that i gave the second book the viscount who loved me which is anthony's book i gave that book five stars so clearly i still liked parts of the series and parts of julia quinn's writing but that one scene baby that one scene ruined a lot for me and I have to be honest with my feelings. Oh, let's move on to blush. Her blush is everything to me. This makes the makeup look. This makes the makeup look. She has like these flush, dewy, pretty cheeks and I love it. So I'm gonna use a couple of cream products. I have one from Makeup Revolution. This is in the shade Peaches and this is a very like neutral color. And then I have one from Honest Beauty called Rose Pink, which is like that flush pink look, which I think is gonna be perfect. That's my only controversial bit. I know some people agree with me, some people don't. We're all entitled to our opinions and feelings. But at the end of the day, I did watch the Bridgerton series as I was very hopeful and excited for the attention that historical romance was getting. At the end of the day, there are so many parts of the series that I do like. It's just that one scene, that one scene that really rubs me the wrong way. I think the show, production-wise, like so stunning they handled it so beautifully they casted the perfect cast like the guy who plays simon his acting is fantastic and he's also so gorgeous like oh my goodness he makes me blush like when i watch the bridgerton series i blush because i'm like how can someone be that handsome you know what i mean and so talented oh oh and the girl who plays daphne like pfft, stunning like literally everyone so freaking beautiful and i loved watching the series it was such a joy i feel like you don't have to read the books to really understand the series but i mean it just helps and it's like a whole it's a whole process it's a whole journey makeup artist on set used some mac eyeshadows so i'm gonna use some mac eyeshadows some neutral colors i'm also using this little wet and wild eyeshadow palette because i think it's so perfect uh, this is kind of like an all matte look. It was really just about defining the eyes and adding a little bit definition. There's not a lot of like shimmer going on. Yeah, a lot of the things that I loved in the books were in the TV show. I loved the sibling dynamic. I loved Lady Whistledown. Just 
I love Simon. I love Anthony. Oh, that was one thing I wanted to say. Anthony was my favorite character, hands down. And I feel like in the book, he was an overprotective big brother, but in a sweet way. But in the show, he was just, he's kind of a jerk for like a few episodes, which I was like, why you gotta do Anthony dirty like that? Like, what's going on? So yeah, I didn't like that whole Anthony thing, like making him seem just so overprotective. And also like that whole scene with the opera singer, like, I could have done without that romance, to be honest. But I'm very excited that he is getting a second season with Kate because, like I said, five stars. Loved his relationship with Kate. I'm so excited for that. But I think the actor who played Anthony did a phenomenal job, truthfully. Oh, and also the actress they picked to play Penelope? Like, exactly how I would imagine that Penelope would look and act. And, like, she was the star of the show for me. Like, I loved her. No, 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 no. Eloise. Eloise was so good in the show. Like her humor and also the sweet relationship that her and Benedict had. Like, oh my gosh. Benedict was amazing. Watch the series and I would give it like a 10 out of 10 would recommend. And it's so funny, like my coworkers who don't read romance at all were like messaging me talking about it. And I was like, okay. I even gave them some book recommendations. It was so fun. That's the thing. So many people are just encouraged to like watch the show and read romance and that's that's really what makes me happy and I hope we get more romance adaptions in the future. I would love to see the Wallflower series by Lisa Kleypas or the Hathaway series by Lisa Kleypas or the Victorian Rebel series by Kerrigan Byrne. Like there are so, oh my gosh, Sarah McLean, the Love by Number series. Wouldn't that be a great adaption? Like I feel like so many shows would be amazing adaptions. So I hope and pray that this opens the door for more adaptions, especially like Beverly Jenkins. Like, can you imagine Night Song or Indigo as a TV show or a movie? Amazing. Spray, a setting spray. This is like a, I got some in my mouth. Don't talk when you're doing that, okay? Um, don't talk when you're doing that. Let's do the brows. Oh my God, I love her brows so much. I have very bushy brows, personally, and they're pretty dark. So I actually don't usually fill in my brows. I've been really rocking the natural brows. Sometimes I'll just like, oh no, I missed my bang. I'll just brush them up and put a little brow gel. Those are very full and lovely. I think the makeup artist used maybe like an Urban Decay brow pencil or something like that. I am going to do the soap brow technique. And if you guys don't know what that is, a lot of people, a lot of makeup artists use soap to create this very fluffy brow. So you wet a little spoolie or a mascara brush, dip it in clear soap and brush it through your brows. And it has this amazing hold, it doesn't budge. And it also gives a very fluffy look. I have this brow soap that I got off of Amazon, which I really, really like. Because you wet your soap, you take your mascara spoolie, really saturate it with the product and then you work that through your brows you can do this before or after you apply product but i like to do it beforehand i think i personally learned from the pixie woo sisters who own real techniques if you've ever seen that brand in ulta they are based out of the uk and they're just like the og makeup artists to be completely honest so i will link a video of how to do soap brows down below if it's a technique you want to try what i did want to mention is that so this has been trending on netflix for quite a while now it's getting a lot of accolades i hear about this show every single day which I love, um, but I'm also seeing a lot of backlash from it and not just about the scene that I'm talking about. Like I can understand constructive criticism in that regard. There are just some absolutely trashy um, pieces and articles that are calling romance trash. And I wholeheartedly disagree with that. I will forever dislike when people call romance trash. Like to call an entire genre trash is just doing such a disservice to the entire genre and to the people who read it and to the people it brings happiness to. So. I also don't like when people call shows or books or anything guilty pleasures. Like, I just don't like the term guilty pleasures because you should never feel guilty about something that makes you happy and it's not harming anyone. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't feel guilty about reading a romance novel. Uh, sure, there's sex in the book and in the scenes, but like, why should I feel guilty about that? There's this one scene that called Bridgerton raunchy um, and cheesy. And I was like, honestly, just because there's sex in it, I'm like, Game of Thrones? so many naked people up on that show and i never heard anyone call game of thrones cheesy or raunchy that was like a masterpiece to some people and there was a ton of naked people in there if you guys have ever seen the show tudors it's a another historical piece of king henry the eighth and his six wives so many naked people so many naked people in that show but i don't really see anyone calling that raunchy or cheesy you know what i mean so just because it's a romance doesn't necessarily mean 
it's cheesy and like there are so many other movies and things that have gotten so much accolade and they don't speak about it like that but because it was a romance created by a woman for women for women's pleasure it is suddenly cheesy and raunchy like I don't agree with that at all. Daphne's brows are a lot lighter than mine. She has lighter hair obviously. My hair is like jet black so I would just look super weird if I went with these light brown eyebrows. Okay so the makeup artist on set I think she used individual eyelashes which makes sense because her eyelashes aren't like these crazy dramatic thing. So I'm gonna apply some individual lashes and mascara and kind of finish up the look and then I'll come back so we can talk about the rest of the series and lip products and show you the final the final product. I wasn't filming when I was doing the lipstick so I believe what was used on set was a Charlotte Tilbury lipstick and I used the same one and a little bit of the cream blush. It looks a little bit pinker on me than it does on the show but it's fine. This is the finished look. I will post more pictures on my Instagram if you want to see it there. I really hope you guys enjoy seeing me do my makeup and talk about books and Bridgerton and everything in between. I know this is so 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 overdue but I just take a little break from filming so sorry about that. So overall my thoughts are I love the Bridgerton series and the TV show. I think the production value was amazing. I think it was perfectly cast. I love that Historic Ruins is getting more attention and more opportunities. That makes me incredibly happy. If you guys want to see more videos like this I did order a couple Regency dresses so I might have one or two more videos like this up my sleeve oh and also this is the last video of my 14 days of video it's Valentine's Day and I have had so much fun filming these past two weeks of videos and I hope you guys enjoyed them so I hope this was a good finale to that series something else planned in the beginning of March so stay tuned for the announcement video for that as always thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to spend with me it means the absolute world to me i hope you guys are all staying happy and healthy and i'll talk to you next time bye